How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week seven. We are 6-0, trying to get to 7-0 as we will play Virginia Tech for our second home game of the season. We are favored to win this game. We are the higher overall team. Statistically, I'd say that we look a little bit better. Uh, Virginia Tech sitting at 2-2. Two two, lost to Wisconsin and NC State. So the two Power 5 teams that they've faced, they've lost to, and they beat the two G5 teams in Old Dominion and ECU, and those two teams combined are a 1-9. and nine. So uh, their wins aren't super impressive. They're not blowout victories either, and their losses are not super close. So this game is going to be ours to lose. Definitely need to come out and do just a fantastic job on both sides of the ball and try to get out of this one easily. We're earning first place votes in the coaches poll right now, sitting at number four. Uh, and in the media poll, we're sitting at number one in the country. But we have a chance to see some chaos in front of us. Nebraska and Penn State, number six and number one, will be playing. That's a big game in the Big Ten. And Texas and Oklahoma will play as well. We're probably rooting for Oklahoma. I mean, even Florida. Sure, they're playing a, an unranked team, but it is LSU at the end of the day. So a big chance there. Auburn plays Ole Miss. Uh, Cal plays Arkansas. So a lot of opportunities. Arizona playing Oregon. Uh, there's there's plenty of chances for ranked teams to be losing in that LSU team uh, that Florida is playing. They might be unranked, but they're just barely unranked. So a good chance for us to see the three teams in front of us take a loss this week. Uh, we did have Marquise Jackson fall off of the Heisman watch list and Radon Randell drop down from the top spot after a pretty weak performance last week. But I'm not going to try to let it affect us. I don't think it'll be too big of a deal uh let's do some recruiting things honestly are looking really good this season for us we don't have any commits just yet but we're gonna get there soon if we look at just the top overall players uh i did add a couple of new guys i think maybe just one yeah we added one new player to the board jj tyson's a strong safety kind of a little low lock cheese 18 percent no scholarships offered so we'll go ahead and scout him and he goes up 82 overall at strong safety Oh, we're giving him points immediately. The second that we can, we are going to give him those points. That's pretty incredible. Uh, two guys ready for visits. Let's set those up and then we can figure everything else out. Now, we're sending guys to the Duke game as much as we can to get complimentary visits in. Uh, if that's not going to work, then we'll try to send them probably to the Miami game. But I don't want any competitive visits. So let's send Ryan Carey, this running back, to this game here against Virginia Tech this week. And with the rest of our points, I mean, we'll scroll through again. We're about to be locked cutoff points of Will Dixon. He's at 97% locked. We actually do have our visit next week with him. So that's going to be pretty big in the lead with Chris Douglas. Spencer Stanley, you can see we gained 10 points this last week. And we should be gaining 15 on Georgia next week. So things are continuing to look good for the corner there. 97% locked in the lead with Nick Pittman. Jeremy Callahan, we're in the lead. Jeremy Harrison. We're gaining on Purdue, so everything is looking fantastic in our recruiting game right now. Uh, I just don't really see how things could necessarily go wrong for us. With our remaining points, though, let's go biggest lead, and let's make sure that we have scholarships offered on all these players. And then what I think we'll do is just give points again to whoever it looks like is going to be well, everybody that we're in the lead with we have a scholarship so yeah we'll give points i think to ian bain how locked is he 87 but with a visit doesn't need it 61 how good is david jackson 71 overall okay who are we gonna give these points to well we'll give another 50 to ryan hall try to get him a little bit higher up the board and then let's actually just go down and find somebody who's solid like billy white pretty quick receiver we could use receivers, so give him 150 points and just try to make it a little bit easier as we are probably going to take the lead over Oklahoma next week. So all in all, things are looking so fantastic for us in recruiting and in the games that we're playing. Trying to stay undefeated, Virginia Tech is a 91 overall team with a 91 offense and a 92 defense. Honestly, a much closer matchup than I had initially anticipated. Let's see, we could get them in an interesting alternate, but I want it to be an away one, so, um, well, I don't know. Should we just give them orange pants? 
That's a weird look. How about the orange helmet? They have one of those, right? Yeah, we'll go orange helmet, maroon pants for the Hokies. And we wore the homes last time, just the standards. I think we might go all black this time around. Um, yeah, go with our alternate and see if we can get this win. Statistically, uh, Virginia Tech sitting okay on offense. They score a decent amount of points, but they don't move the ball super well. They've been passing it more than anything else, which is actually good news for them. Defensively, they're bottom of the barrel as far as I'm concerned, while at this point, offensively, we look, again, pretty mediocre. Our special teams being as good as it has been so far this season has kind of hurt those numbers. But look at our defense. Now, we're only 23rd, which sounds bizarre to say only 23rd, but only 23rd in the pass defense. First everywhere else. Uh, if we can shut down their passing game, I feel very good. Again, we do have a running back here, Ryan Carey, which is actually, now that I think about it, a very fitting name for a running back to have. Uh, at least a very fitting last name. So we'll try to rush for 100 yards to get him excited as uh, ooh, one of their top players injured. A kicker is their second best. So we know that he's going to have a bit of a leg. This wide receiver, Payo, Payo, however you say it, cooked us last year. He's had a good season so far, but he's going to get 98 overall. Definitely going to be the guy that we need to key in on. And their third best player is the cornerback in S. Williams, 93 overall, but he's injured and there's a chance he might not play. Strained Achilles, he is probable, so we'll see if he makes it into this game. It is a beautiful sunny day here at Brooks Stadium in Conway, as we'll try to get this one underway as soon as possible. Uh, we win the coin flip, so that's, what, two in a row? Maybe three in a row. We'll definitely elect to kick this one off. And with the two mile an hour wind at our back, we'll have Frederick put this one into the end zone and they're not gonna be able to return this one. Just taking the touch back. Let's come out and see what this defense can do today as it's actually gonna be a run on first down in a lot of space. Number one defense in the country getting beat on that one. Uh, I'm not gonna allow that. We're gonna bring the blitzes, force them to go to the air and really do whatever we can to stop these guys on the ground although a massive couple of carries on the first two attempts phillips does get the tackle eventually and holds fred cooley to a gain of two these guys are on one heck of a hurry up as third and one it's going to be a play action quarterback needs to get rid of it in time it's a bit of a screen kale mac kale mackie gets there but it's not in time and i just have to continue to blitz uh, they are really, really forcing us into a weird spot. They do find their best player, the 98 overall receiver in Jaden Payot. Payot, maybe? I have no idea how to say it, to be honest. Second and two, expecting the run up the middle. It is going to be a handoff, and Riley is there to get the tackle, finally stopping them for a loss on this drive. That play puts them into the third down and gives us a chance to take a breather before they step back to pass. And of course, they're going to find the wide receiver. Uh, this dude's going to do everything for him, I think. Trying to key in on him, but it's just a, a very difficult assignment as we're going to continue to bring the blitzes and try to make sure that they can't run the ball on us. Second and 11, expecting them to step back to pass. It is a play action, and I got beat over the middle. Just didn't have the speed to keep with Rodney Anderson there, so... They go four for four through the air, and Virginia Tech wasted no time marching down the field on that drive. A quick 7-0 lead for the Hokies. It's going to make me want to get a good return here. I want the defense to get another shot right away. Special teams not really doing much. Marquise doesn't go down, though, at the first contact. It gets us out past the 25-yard line. That's a big effort play for Marquise. As again, we're going to try to run the ball on first down here. And CJ Beasley using the blocks perfectly and finding 12 yards. That was fantastic. First and 10. What if we just throw the ball? Looking, looking. X is going to be wide open. And it's Marquise. I didn't realize that. 16 yards. Can't get through the first contact, though. I got to remember that this defense has struggled at stopping the teams that they've played so far this year. There's CJ Beasley on just the easy reception. 19 yards. We're moving quick now ourselves. 
How about the read option? Can we get uh, Radon involved in the ground? It looks like we can. The blocking, okay. Didn't slide down how I wanted to, but we got a good seven yards there. We'll go back to the play that worked so well for us last time as we'll look and almost throw a pick. Uh, I was trying to get to Marquise, but he didn't make the cut as quick as I was hoping, and lucky that one doesn't get picked off. So on this third down, let's go ahead and run the read option. Let Radon take it. Is he going to have the speed getting the stiff arm cheese just enough for that first down, and the drive will stay alive. Not going to have to try the field goal here yet. Try the handoff now on this one, and somehow CJ fighting through. Gets five yards for us. This has been pretty fantastic so far. Running it again up the middle, falling forward. That's all I really ever ask for if you're going to take the contact is just make sure you fall forward. Going to take a bit of a risk here, though. Third and three, we are going to run the ball. Looking up the middle, cutting it back. CJ... Gets the first and goal. Five yards, man. Almost was able to stretch it into the end zone. But that play will set us up for this first fullback dive attempt. Can J.J. Barr find the end zone on first and goal? Met at the line of scrimmage. And he doesn't get in. I feel like maybe he got a couple of inches. We're going to give it to him again. They're stacked over the center. J.J. Barr diving that time. Still doesn't get in. Oh, that's a mistake by me. I thought for sure he would have broke the plane a little bit. Instead, third and goal, and I'm going to be stubborn as all heck here. Going to give it to him again, and JJ finally gets in. Oh, wow. Would have been a lot easier, I think, if we just let Radon go with the QB sneak, but it's fullback dive time as we tie this game up. Now we can just kick it away and let the defense come out. This will definitely be returnable and it is that 98 overall wide receiver getting the return but a big hit on Jaden keeps him inside the 20 hoping that they just run the ball and they do and oh Phillips had a chance to get it this actually could turn into something really dangerous Jenkins thank goodness is so quick he's able to get that hit but that was dangerous as they step back I expected the draw there instead they throw it again a little crossing route for 10 more yards Feels like we have nothing that we can do to stop this offense right now. Trying to bring pressure with a little safety blitz. And finally, I don't even think the coverage was good. Malone just takes the sack. And if we're lucky, that'll be enough for us to get the stop on this drive. I don't expect it, though. Maybe a handoff it is out towards the edge. Smith there to get the slowdown. Doesn't quite get the tackle. But eventually it happens at the line of scrimmage. It's Will Phillips getting it done. And, wow, adding insult to injury. A little false start from the offensive line of the Hokies. And I think it might have been the right tackle. Maybe the center gets called for it. One of those two, but it brings up a third and 23, and surely we don't give this up, trying to let guys be open enough to just get the quarterback to throw a nice, easy, safe throw for us. And we do get the stop. So the first quarter is going to come to a close. The quarterback, perfect, six is six. But we will force them probably to punt this ball away as we're all tied up looking to take our first lead of the game. We know their kicker is very good, like 94 overall. I'm not sure if this is him punting the ball, but I expect this probably not to be returnable. And uh, okay, well, that's not a great kick no matter what. Lands in the back of the end zone. No chance of that being anything but a touchback. And it will be time for the offense to come back out onto the field once again. And look at they want to show pressure. We'll see if we can burn them. Tyson Mobley, Marquise Jackson on those go routes. And we'll see if we need to roll outside the pocket. We will. Can we get it up for Marquise? The ball's far enough out in front of him. And he holds on through the contact and gets 43 yards on that play for us. Actually, good coverage from number 43 there. Just... Unlucky Marquise has such good hands. That's one of my favorite ways to start a drive. Just with a nice big gain on first down and then go back to the normal offense and uh, utilize that beautiful field position. Braden Bennett comes in for this play at running back and second and five. I wanted to throw to him, but he's not open enough. So we're going to scramble with Radon Randell. He's got just the safety to make miss. And oh man. 
didn't juke how I wanted to. We're lucky to hold on to that. He was low on stamina and took a couple of hits, but still held on to the football, thankfully, for us. We'll keep Braden in for this play to get the handoff on first down, and there's just no blocking for him in the gap, so only gets a yard on that play. Utilizing Radon's legs a lot so far in this game. We're going to do it again, potentially, with the read option. He will keep the ball. He has some blockers in front, and we're just going to slide him on down there. Give ourselves the third and three now inside the 10. This could be a risky play, but we're going to go with the halfback blast on this one. Plenty of lead blockers. CJ Beasley. Oh, my gosh. Again, how is that not a touchdown? He's close to have had it, having two at this point. But instead, he just gets us back to that inch line, and it's going to be time for J.J. Barr to go for the fight. And again, he doesn't get it on first down, but we're going to continue to try to run those. I'm feeling very stubborn for some reason today about the fullback dive. Not the easiest way to score our points, but we got to send a message as J.J. again just gets back to the line of scrooge. It's third and goal. Just, uh... I don't know, ramming my head against a brick wall right now. Third and goal. We're going to try it again, and JJ does get in. So, <laughs> testing the Virginia Tech goal line stands there. We come out on top for the second time, and we will take the lead. It is 14-7 as Frederick kicks this one off. And again, I think this will be a returnable kick, and yeah, they will bring it out. This time, a much better return for him. As, oh my gosh, he stood back up and went backwards a yard. Oh, wow, that got a little bit dangerous. All righty, first and 10. I'm going to expect the passing game with only three minutes left in this half. Stepping back, trying to watch. And, ooh, I don't know if the quarterback just had to get rid of that or if it was a bad throw or what, but it is incomplete. And this one's going to be a run, actually, on second down. Uh, Not going to take the timeout yet. But on this third and nine, they're stepping back to pass. Plenty of time. Man's going to be open over the middle. Yep, I saw him on the slant the whole time. Nothing I could do to stop that. They do get the 13 yards. Man is practically unguardable if he really just runs the right routes. And wow, where is our coverage? Does it exist? Wilfred Penne gets 21 on this first down. Expecting another pass. They will step back. And there's uh, Christian Scott, only three yards, but he gets out of bounds. We'll take a risk on this second down. A safety blitz and a hard time speaking. And wow, the running back just dropped the pass. So it's now third and seven with the clock stopped. If we can manage to hold them on this one, we're going to look great. And that wide receiver's not even in on the play. So stepping back. Oh, <laughs> Logan Smith. Gets in there to deflect it. Can't come up with the interception. And it brings up fourth and seven, but Virginia Tech's going to go for it. So not getting the interception really detrimental as it looks like, again, that wide receiver not in. They're stepping back. They're stepping back. And over the middle, they might have got it. No, it's a turnover on downs. An unfavorable spot for the Hokies means that we have two and a half minutes and all our timeouts to extend this lead before halftime. Well, let's be aggressive here. Pressure coming outside the pocket. Waiting, waiting, waiting. We're going to throw across the field. Find the running back and get that easy first down. Surprise nobody was around it, but it works. First and 10 play action. Again, trying to sit in the pocket. This time we're going to scramble out this way. B may be open. We could have given it to Marquise, but I don't want to make that throw. We could have maybe had 16 yards on it, but honestly, I would rather... Just have the eight yards and make sure that we keep possession of the ball. Marquise, I think, would have been wide open there. Give this one to Logan Malden, though, and let the tight end get some yards. And, man, we haven't even had to take a timeout yet. I keep getting them to press up on Marquise, but only when there's a safety to protect them. So that's a bit of a shame. Is that Logan Malden? Oh, my gosh. The pass was behind him. He made a great catch. Almost got the first down. We're going to take our first time out there, allow ourselves to get some subs in. And let's see how this one works. Jackson comes in motion, second and inches. Again, I'm going to get outside the pocket. He is open, but why throw it to him when I can use him to give us a block? We've rushed for over 100 yards, which is good for that recruit. Uh, and it's still just the first half, and we've got the first and goal. You love to see that kind of blocking coming from your wide receivers. That was phenomenal. 
On first down, handing off the ball to CJ. And oh my gosh, this man wants to get into the end zone. We have to reward him with another carry here on second and goal. Continuously, he's getting us into the right spot. Man, they're really stacked up over the line. I don't think that he gets this. We got to give him the carry anyways. And he does. Finds the yard as he's getting tackled. And it's going to be 21-7. to Definitely CJ Beasley deserved that touchdown. He's having himself a really good game so far today. The worst part about that drive is that it only took a minute and eight seconds. So 115 left on the clock for Virginia Tech, and the Hokies have all of their timeouts. Uh, we know they can move the ball pretty fast. So we'll see if it's their plan to come out and try to pass or if they're just going to get to the locker room. No, first down looking for the throw. They have the out route to Tyree Saunders for 12 yards. DeAndre Malone now 11 of 14 passing the ball. First down. Well, we got the... Wow, okay. We were going to tackle him in bounds, but Kale Mackey said no. He's not even going to catch the ball. That brings up a second and 10 for us as... Again, expecting them to pass. And they will, man. They went right at me right as I made the mistake, but they don't get the first down. We expect the pass. They'll step back and... Hart gets the interception. They went for Paiute, and Hart's maybe gone. A couple of guys to be in a foot race for the corner. I'm going to dive to make sure we get as many yards as possible on that one. But the interception, just a great play to turn on it and find the ball. That's the first turnover of the game. 43 seconds left for us to extend this lead once again. Two timeouts to work with. We're going to go with the halfback dive on first down, and CJ gets his second touchdown of the game. You never know. Virginia Tech still plenty of time to score for themselves, but we increase the lead now to 21 points. We've got to give credit to the defense. They have been giving up a lot of yards, and Virginia Tech goes on these quick momentum-building runs, and then all of a sudden the defense holds. As this is a really good return. Oh, my goodness. 28 yards, but just refused to go down there. So we'll see if we can hold these guys first and 10. They'll step back to pass. Man's going to be wide open. No, <laughs> they threw it to the running back and he just dropped it. I am not against this. Kind of hoping they run the ball, but still expecting the pass with 30 seconds left. They will step back looking to throw and Leon Sandcastle can't get there in time. So gives up the first down. We get the ball to start the third quarter. So kind of in a bend but don't break uh mentality right now because i wouldn't mind it if we just held them to a field goal or something they'll step back to pass and oh my gosh hart gets another interception and he's gonna have another great return for us so with 20 seconds 19 seconds left we're in prime position to put this one into the end zone and make it a 28 point lead josh hart doing some work Man, I'm so bad with some of the names on our defense. I got to apologize to Charles Hart. Josh Hart is like a basketball player or something. Uh, first down. I'm going to scramble. This might be a touchdown if we get the blocks right on. Oh, my gosh. He took a big hit, but it's first and goal with 13 seconds. And this might not work. We're going to go halfback direct snap to Braden Bennett. If we could get the playoff. Radon, what are you doing? Get back and snap this ball. Seven seconds. Six. Brayden Bennett's not going to get it. Oh, my gosh. What an absolute waste of time. Three seconds. Well, I am livid now. I don't understand what Radon's doing there. Just got to get the ball snapped. Instead, he wastes more than half our time. and We have to settle for a field goal. Uh, you know, we get free points, but that's not how I wanted it to happen. Just try to squib this one. 31 to 7. Force them to just field it, take the second off the clock, and all right, 31-7 into the locker room. I can't be mad. That last drive, yeah, a little bit of clock mismanagement issues, but we are looking so solid. Two turnovers on the day, I think puts us maybe plus one on the season, at least back to even, so looking great there. Defense has done a phenomenal job. The offense is doing more than enough. Uh, we haven't even had to rely on special teams. Just getting it done both sides of the football, limiting their opportunities, especially when they start to get that momentum going. So feeling good. If we can get one more turnover, I think this game is completely over. But a touchdown on the opening drive of this third quarter, that might be enough as well. It is going to be a returnable kick for Marquise Jackson. We haven't had a good bit of blocking 
from our special teams in a while. That was so close, but just not quite. Man got pancaked. I got a little bit confused about where to go and accidentally ran over him. So good return, but definitely not a touchdown. I'm going to look to pass on this first play of the half as we'll step back and nobody's really open. Marquise maybe, but again, I'm trying not to throw an interception in this game right now. I think the last thing this offense needs is to give the ball away. So we'll try to just run the ball. Beasley getting some solid blocks. Could have been a little bit better, but enough for the first down. And we'll give him another attempt. A little zone weak on this first down. You know, again, the, the hole isn't great, but he's falling forward still. So just finding a yard or two when it seems like we're going to get none. And bringing Marquise in motion. I'm kind of looking at Logan Malden. And Logan is open, but let's go with the safe one. Well, never mind. Uh, That's what my bad. Just pulled Beasley out of the way. This is not the play that I thought I called. Uh, It's a four verts. It's not what I want. Let's, uh, let's do a little bit of hot routing here to make this a little bit more manageable. So we'll snap the ball on third down, hoping for the best. Outside the pocket, and there it is. Nice and patient. We find Braden Bennett. Big carry. Oh, couldn't juke out that last defender. Marquise couldn't quite get the block, but it's uh, just a, a late wheel route as we find Braden Bennett in the first down. We overloaded the right side of the field with receivers, and we had plenty of time to be patient and look for the right throw, and we were able to do so. CJ has nothing as he tries to get towards the edge that time. Really want to find a good pass to Marquise Jackson, but the coverage has been almost suffocating. He would have been wide open there. Can we find him? There it is. <laughs> Again, just the patience waiting for somebody to come open is working well for us. Radon now 8 of 10 for 176 yards. Gets a touchdown there. We extend the lead once again. In the Red River shootout, Texas currently trailing that number 10 Oklahoma in the fourth quarter. That could be big for us. And Virginia Tech has a 31-point deficit to try to overcome starting in this third quarter. I got to hope the defense can hold them one more time here on this drive. If we manage to find that stop, we're going to look really good. As this is a play action on first down. We brought a little blitz. Thankfully, Kale Mackey's there to stop it before it becomes too big. I will expect a pass, and they will go to the air. I'm stuck on a lineman. A couple of broken tackles. Wow, three broken tackles there for the tight end as he gets a first down. That man's had a couple of big plays for him as first and ten. We'll see. Can we maybe jump the snap again, expecting a pass, but we're bringing the blitz. And on first down, no, it's going to be a run. Smith couldn't get it. Logan's there. Holds him to only a gain of one. I'm all over the place on names today. That was K.O. Mackey getting the tackle. Logan Malden's a freaking tight end goon. What are you talking about? This one, a throw. Oh, man, he just got beat. Thankfully, Jenkins is there as the safety to stop it from becoming a touchdown. That was just a confident, confident throw from the wide receiver that time as... Uh-oh. Oh, man, I think he had a touchdown if he just had another second to get off the pass, but it's Sidney McRae getting in there finding the sack and giving us uh, again a chance to breathe when we're on defense and the other team is driving rapidly as they have been on this drive so far that's all I need sometimes is just a chance to maybe get some subs and maybe to see this quarterback get sacked again and giving us a third and 27 should be more than enough time for us to get our breather as we'll expect them to probably throw this one up and we'll just try to prevent that. You know, I'm going to go sack this quarterback. If he's not going to throw the ball, we're going to just drill him for a loss of three. Bring up the fourth and 31. This guy's offensive line needs to get uh, a talking to. Maybe he needs to learn to stay in the pocket a couple of those times as well. Forcing the punt, and it will be a returnable one for Marquise. So if we can get some blocks, maybe we can turn it into something. And one man to beat, and that was gone. Just too quick for that number 22 on that one. It's a shame because he started the season so strong on special teams and just hasn't had the opportunity to do much. Senses right on. Oh my gosh, the scramble's been there all game long. 
How can I not take it when we have that much green, or should I say teal, in front of us? Nine carries for over 100 yards for him now. We might give him another one. Read option. Braden's not going to get it, so right on off to the races. Giving a little slide tackle to that defender and getting eight more yards for us. I am so worried that we're going to drop a game to a team that we shouldn't sometime in this season. So when we get to this point in the game and we're up as big as we are, it really, really just eases the anxiety of taking a bad loss. Maybe we can have a little bit of fun with it. No, they're bringing pressure. I am not going to run uh, a flea flicker when it looks like they're going to blitz us. Instead, we'll hand it off to CJ. And oh my gosh, shoestring tackled prevented that from becoming more than four. Uh, I'm going to give CJ one more carry here, and then we're going to swap him out with Brayden for the rest of the game. He made the most of that one. Nine yards on that carry. This is the point of the game now where the extra speed that Brayden Bennett has could really be useful. And I've also moved Isaiah Conley up into that backup spot so that he has a chance to get a few reps. Our third string running back's 91 overall, and he never sees the field. And so on what will be the final play of the third quarter, we'll hand it off one more time and try to continue picking up yards. Brayden, good spin move, but just too many defenders in the area, so... Ends up losing a yard on the play as the clock hits that triple zero. And we can head to the fourth quarter up a massive amount. 38 to 7. Might be time to start burning the clock away to keep this margin of victory. But first we have to convert on third down. Looks like they want to bring pressure and we're going to run away from it. Oh no. Brain Bennett gets the catch and he got the first down. I thought he was going to go out of bounds or be just short. But he's done enough to give us that first and goal. That puts us to a perfect, I think, 7 of 7 on third downs in this game, which is more than enough. Bennett towards the corner. No touchdown, but he got 9, and he's right there on the doorstep. And you already know what time it is. J.J. Barr, can he get his third touchdown of the game? Falling forward finally that time. He gets it. Another touchdown on the fullback dive, and it's going to be 45 to 7. Let's go ahead and see what the defense has in store. Going to keep the first stringers out there the rest of the game. I don't want to give up yards or points because it's going to make us look better. And, oh, this is a very good return. Ooh, that was close to him being free. Let's continue to try to hold these guys. First and 10. Again, I'm going to be expecting the pass on all of these plays. would be surprised if they put it on the ground. And, no, they throw out to the running back who breaks a tackle. Breaks another one, man. Thank goodness he was stumbling there. He had blockers in front of him and a lot of space. More than happy to just give up the yards and then see him hit the ground. This is going to be a run, and Emmanuel Bush can get in the backfield. Just kind of give him a shoulder check and knock him down. We've had an impressively high number of uh, tackles for loss so far in this game. Unfortunately, we did give up 10 there, but it is third down. I'm going to take a risk here. Bring it a blitz on third and two. It's a run out towards the edge. Riley gets the stop. It's a loss of two. Fourth and four. They might go for this. But we've now given ourselves more of a chance on this one. As Kale Mackey gets the tackle. Oh, they threw it short of the line again. So even though it was completed, it means nothing for them. And with 3.43 left in the game, the offense gets to come back out. And we just get to continue to stat pad. That's all this game has really been, is just us racking up the points and the yards. I don't expect uh, the Hokies to take their timeouts in this game. So a first down, I think, should be enough to do it, assuming that we can get there. As we are in a third and three, and I do want to convert this just so that we're perfect on the day with our third downs. So as we look for the 8 of 8 on third down conversions, we'll get outside the pocket and, uh-oh, throwing it up, Brayden Bennett. Can't come down with it. <laughs> I should have just ran the ball to keep burning the clock. But here we are. They were not going to let us scramble on that one. So we'll go for it on fourth down. Anything they can do, we can certainly do better. Oh my gosh. Radon getting chased down from behind and just tries to throw it in there nobody able to get their hands on it so turnover on downs i'm incredibly lucky just to have been able to avoid that sack uh, honestly they're gonna run this one out towards the edge and they only get two yards maybe they are giving up we'll see 
They are still in the hurry up for some reason, but they're stepping back to pass. And, well, they got another first down. Bit annoying, but they just haven't given up yet. This one trying to bring the blitz as they run it. We do give up positive yards again, but at least the clock is moving. I'm curious to see if the blitz on this second and four will work. Expecting them to bring pressure. I could see our man Jaden out there on the edge all alone. No, it's a draw. They hand it off and he broke the tackle. Oh, that's a shame because they got the first down instead of being dropped and forcing third. It'd be a real shame if we gave up points at this point. Uh, we, <laughs> we're so close to holding them just to seven, but they are not stopping. I'm going safety blitz again. I refuse to allow it. Try to get the pressure there in time. And it's a run out towards the edge. And again, the tackling not quite there, but finally comes in third and one. And an injured player means we'll get the chance to make some substitutions. No way that I can allow them to run it up the middle on this play. Third and one, trying to bring the pressure. And we get the stop. So fourth and three might be enough to just end the game. I wouldn't be surprised if they just kick a field goal. And they're actually going to go for this. <laughs> These guys not going to say that they're going to quit. Uh, they are just giving it their all. A run. Kale Mackey gets the stop. Another turnover on downs for this defense. What a hit there to prevent that from becoming more. And we're technically going to run two plays here, but it's kind of a screw you for continuing to run to them. We're going to hand it off to Braden Bennett, let him get some more yards, and then we're going to take a timeout, actually. And we will take the timeout so that we can just take a knee, come out in a victory for a formation, get that free 10 XP that we get for kneeling in the last minute while we're in the lead. And... As the game comes to a close, man, kind of a shame. Seven of eight on third downs, almost perfect on the day, but the team played pretty close to perfect from what I expect from them. They did a very, very good job. Uh, right on Randell, 10 of 14 for 190 yards and a touchdown. He carried it for almost a couple hundred more. Fantastic. Bunch of fullback dives working, both running backs getting some beautiful carries in the defense was phenomenal holding these guys to only seven points on the day a couple of turnovers a ton of sacks a bunch of tackles for loss and of course like three turnover on downs created oh boy a little spoiler for the top 25 polls that lsu team does get it done 35 to 24 they upset the undefeated number three florida gators which is great news for us. Unfortunately, that seems to be pretty much the only upset. I guess Arkansas beats Cal, which is bad news for us because we want the SEC, uh, you know, average rank to drop, but not the end of the world. And how about this? 45 to 7. We took it to them. Held them to 63 on the ground and 217 through the air. Beat them in the turnover battle and the time of possession. We rushed for 200 ourselves. That was just a, a nice complete game. 24 second quarter points is just mind-bendingly fantastic. Radon, of course, our offensive player of the game with all his work. But how about Charles Hart? Uh, two interceptions, both coming at the end of the first half. Great returns on him, really set us up. I mean, he got us a free 10 points there. He did a great job. That puts us now to 7-0. And we're going to sim through to the next week. We play Miami at home in week eight. We have a couple more visits coming in that one. Will we be playing it definitely as a top three team, but will we be top two perhaps? Curious to see what happens uh, in the Texas game. And we will see if uh, Penn State was able to hold off Big Red. Nobody, nothing good really happening. Nothing bad really happening. Good visit for Ryan Carey. Bo Myers going to commit to Ole Miss. Not a big loss. Big recruiting battles. But again, we're winning those recruiting battles so far. Bunch of XP. What's our rank? Still number four. Uh-oh. Something weird had to have happened. Let's check it out. Top 25 polls. We know that number three Florida lost in front of us. And it's Purdue. What? What? Purdue jumps us. They were fifth and they beat freaking Maryland 40 to 35. That's not a good win. Not a good enough win to jump us in front. Uh, and they don't even have good. Their best win is a two and four Mizu. And it was what? A nine point win? 
they were they beat an FCS team, a one and three Temple, a one and five Ohio State, which is crazy that the Buckeyes are that far off, and a one and five uh, Maryland. So, I mean, I guess they have Nebraska they can beat to prove that they belong there. That that's so absurd to me. Um, Penn State was able to beat Nebraska. That gives the Cornhuskers their first loss, and Texas was able to beat Oklahoma. Touchdown game in each of those. We do not deserve to be jumped in that situation, especially because we already have two more wins than them. But not only do we have two more wins, we have a win over a good Notre Dame team, still ranked number 18, four and two, and a win over a three and one Cincinnati. Our wins just in general are better. Like maybe the Troy loss and the Virginia loss is worse, but like uh, we're also slaughtering our opponents. So I don't believe that. I assume in the media poll, we, we didn't even get to keep our number one in the media poll, which is fair because we didn't play a ranked team. But just the lack of respect that we continue to get shown is mind boggling to me. Did Radon jump back up in the Heisman watch at least? That was a very good game for him and he went down. Oh, what do we got to do? <laughs> we cannot win in the eyes of pollsters or the media. So nothing going well for us. Uh, was he player of the week or something? No. How about in the ACC? No. Wow. Well, if they want to keep giving us bulletin board material, I can't say that I'm going to complain too much. Uh, Miami, the higher overall team for maybe the second time this season, although it shouldn't be by too much. Uh, statistically, they're having a fantastic season, although our defense is phenomenal, and we are now plus one. On the turnover differential, we're favored to win this. The Hurricanes are 3-2 and two on the season right now. Uh, who were their wins? They have beaten... My goodness, if I can navigate this. They have beaten uh, Duke, North Carolina, and Mizzou in very mediocre games. And they lost to... to they First of all, okay. They lost to Georgia Southern and Bowling Green. Uh, it's a good Georgia Southern team and they barely lost uh, and it's a mediocre Bowling Green and they barely lost, but you cannot be losing those games as like a 95 overall team. Uh, so we just need to make sure that we show up. It is at home again. So that's good news for us. We'll have a couple of recruits that we need to make sure, uh, so far five visiting, make sure that we show out for them, but that's unfortunately going to have to wait until next episode. We've got five games left in the regular season, so hopefully we can just continue to stay undefeated, just building up the momentum. It feels like we're getting better almost every single game that we're playing. So if you're enjoying these wins, let me know with a like. Uh, you know, I'm going to do it again. Every time uh, I say it, it seems to be effective. So again, 100 likes or somewhere around there at least within the first 24 hours or so of this video being posted and we'll go back to back i'll upload one tomorrow as well um see if we can beat these hurricanes and of course while you're down there hit the like button feel free to subscribe both of those two things do such a tremendous job in helping this channel grow which is something that i want and i think that uh it could help make this content a little bit better and while you're down there head to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, our community discord, and the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. That being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. Wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. We'll see you later. Adios.